and gentlemen, welcome back to Unarmored Talk Podcast. I know it's been a couple of weeks. Good to see you. And if you're on the audio platforms, good to, I can't say good to hear you, so maybe it's good for you to hear my voice. <laughs> I'm your host, Mario P. Fields, and today's guest is Lauren Schieffer. Lauren. How are you doing? I am doing amazing. Did I get your last name right? You did indeed. Thank you so much. That's for that. what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Before I bring on this amazing guest, she's a speaker, author, and more. I just want to say, first of all, thank you for, again, supporting on Armor Talk podcast as we get close to two years in running. 590 plus cities, 31 countries and territories, almost 70,000 views on YouTube. You guys are rocking it. I'm just sitting here got a high chair, by the way. You guys know that makes me look tall on TV. But I'm just sitting here doing what you guys want me to do, and I appreciate the support. And then our amazing sponsor, Robert and Miriam Norris, TakeChargeYourHealth.usana.com. Again, you guys always say, Mario, you look good. You sound good. It looks like you're growing some hair. It's because I take those cell essentials, baby. Take those cell essentials. If you want to learn more, hit me up at host at unarmoredtalk.com or go on their website and check them out. Now, let's get right to the main event. Lauren, welcome. Please tell the listeners and viewers a little bit about your amazing self. I am uh, the colonel's daughter. My father was a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force. Wow. Wow. Uh, and he was a very powerful force in my life. Just about everything that I know, I teach, I stand on, I learned from my dad or from people that I had the privilege of learning from and meeting at all because of who my dad was. Right. Uh, it was a very, uh, also large presence, stood six feet, six and a half inches tall. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, and 285 pounds on his very leanest day. Man had a personality that entered the room five minutes before he did. Wow. So a lot of my um, inner strength and perseverance came from my dad. Nice. That is, and thanks for your service. I mean, I... <laughs> You know, I got I got some adult children and and, and but uh, although the service member serving, I, I believe it, the family is more important because they deal with all the turbulence while we're out there having fun as service members. So I, I wouldn't say you. more important, but most people don't <laughs> really understand that that military families serve. Right. Right along with the veteran. Yes, they absolutely. Do. Yes, they do. So thank, thank you so much. Well, hey, you're, you've, you've inspired thousands, and I'm not going to take too much of your time today, but thank you for removing your armor to help folks. And to talk about a topic that um, it's a very, very emotionally charged topic for lots of folks. Uh, it, and so I just, I'm thankful. I, I am. I thank God to have you on the show, and I'm thankful that you have the courage to do it. So let's just jump right into the topic. From my basic understanding, you had something very, very catastrophic, I'll use that term for me, that, uh, that happened to you at a young age where you've, you chose to develop some skills that to heal and thrive. Let's jump right into it. Thank you for that. Um, uh, not once, but twice. Wow. So when I was 17, um, I was sexually assaulted. And um, I was actually in Greece. I was on um, a summer study tour. I was, study I was studying Michelangelo Bonarote. Um, but I happened to have been in, in Greece. Um, and uh, it happened, uh, a Greek citizen on, on a beach. Mm. Um, and we were leaving the next day. Uh, the study tour was leaving the next day. And I was absolutely certain that if I told anyone what had happened, they would send me home and my study tour would be over. Wow. So I shoved my torn clothes um, into the garbage can at the hotel and packed my bags and, and moved on. I didn't tell anybody. Right. 
Um, when I, uh, uh, two years later, th- three years later, mm-hmm. um, I, my car broke down on the side of the road. I was coming home from a dance rehearsal. I was in a, um, uh, community theater production. And, mm-hmm. uh, so I was in dance clothes and, um, the person that stopped, uh, ostensibly to help me was not interested in fixing my car. Wow. Um, and when I managed to get myself home from that, because uh, oddly enough, um, after he was gone, my car started again. You have to be kidding me. So I drove it home. Um, as it turns out, the engine was fried, but it managed to, it managed to get me home. Um, so here's the deal. They happened to me and they were horrible. Right. Icky. Um, there were two things that I wanted to share with you, mm-hmm. Mario, with your listeners. Um, the first is a visual. When I was going through treatment, because I am also um, a, a recovering bulimic, I have an eating disorder. It's called bulimia nervosa. I've been in sustained recovery for 38 years. Hooray for me. Um, and congratulations, when I was go- Lauren, by the way, that's, that's a tough one. So con- con- thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Food has never been my friend, um, in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Uh, but, um, when I was going through treatment, the, the woman that was running my group program, her name was Pia, by the way. And Pia gave, gave me this visual that has carried, um, through much of my life. She said, Lauren, I see you standing in the center of a cesspool surrounded by liquid human waste. And if you stand very, very still, everything settles down, nothing's moving. It's almost like you can tell yourself you're not in the middle of the cesspool and it doesn't smell as bad. When you move, it roils everything up Mm. and it reminds you where you are. So you stand very, very still. You control everything in your life Mm. so that you can stand very, very still. Three steps, Lauren, in any direction will take you out of that cesspool. You will be able to take a shower, strip those filthy clothes off and walk away from what happened to you for the rest of your life. Right. They are going to be the hardest, smelliest, worst three steps that you've ever taken in your life as you come to terms with what's happened to you. But once you've done that, then you're the victor. So the choice is yours. Are you going to stay there? Or are you going to take those really hard steps? Right. Um, and eventually with help, I, I took those really hard steps. And, and, you know, Lauren, and, and I, and I, and thank you for sharing, you know, how you had to live uh, with these, these memories um, and try to function as a young adult to a point where you had to make a choice. Um, and you were offered, you know, by, by professional um, choices. And the thing I love about how you shared that is because this fits right in with the, the podcast is, is we can't control sometimes uh, the events that happen to us while living, but we can choose the outcome um, based off of choice. And the choice you made is to take those three steps, which now my assumption is you, you're on 3,600. I'll put a number on there, but uh, you know, cause every time I talk to you, I smile anyway, if you guys are listening, you could probably feel my smile through the virtual, you know, virtual platform. And it's because of Lauren's c- courage. So now you take these three steps and now things are starting to change. Talk to us about that. Uh, uh, that massive smile that you saw on my face was because you, uh, of, of the word outcome. Uh, and I'd like to frame for you mm-hmm. uh, something I, that I share in my keynotes. Uh, some of my keynotes, not all of my keynotes. Um, 
that allowed me to work through this. And it is the concept of the word hero in an anagram. Mm. Most people believe that the happening determines the outcome. And that is a falsehood. The happening plus your evaluation of that happening determines whether you react or respond mm. to that outcome and the, uh, to that happening. And then the, that is what determines the outcome. So when anyone, male or female, anyone suffers the indignity of a sexual assault, it is actually fairly normal and natural to assume that it's your fault. Right. I should not have been walking alone on a beach in Greece at 17, having drunk more ouzo than I ever had before or should anyone probably should. I should, shouldn't have, I should have, I shouldn't have, I should have. It's normal and natural. Right. It took time, a lot of therapy, um, to convince myself that it was not my fault. And because it was a stranger, it actually had nothing whatsoever to do with me as a human being. I was merely the object right. of one perpetrator's criminal behavior. Right. It, when it happens to someone a second time, yeah, Mario, yeah, yeah. it's a whole lot harder to convince yourself that it's not your fault. Wow. I never thought about that. I should not have been out at two o'clock in the morning in dance clothes in a car that was barely running. I should have mm -hmm. stayed on the freeway rather than running into the trees where it's secluded. Right. I should have, shouldn't have. Um, again, it took time, some really horrible steps out of the cesspool and support from therapy to convince myself that it wasn't my fault right so the evaluation so these are the happenings the evaluation becomes it was not my fault yeah that determines how i react or respond and had i chosen to react for the rest of my life i would have stayed perfectly still in the middle of that cesspool never taken those three steps and maybe hmm. never left my house again oh wow Instead, I chose to respond and how I respond creates the outcome. And the outcome is that I now have the credibility and the emotional strength and perseverance to stand on stage and share with thousands of people, I say women, people globally, yeah. That there is light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. Now that's probably not the outcome that the perpetrator intended at the happening, but that's the outcome that I have chosen. And sometimes our greatest gifts in life come wrapped in sandpaper. That outcome is a gift that came wrapped in sandpaper that walking out of the cesspool helped me create. And look at it, and you know, and I, and I have to agree, Lauren. I mean, I've, went, I've been on your website and at the end, I will, 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 I'll ask you how, you know, I'll let you, let the listeners and viewers know how they can find you because they need to find you. you. You know, you are an inspiration. Um, I can only speak for me. You've inspired me since I met you on Quick Hits with Dr. Robin and, and, and the team. And so anyway, um, just amazing. To, to listen to you. And I, and I like how you high, how you talked about if you would have reacted your belief, right? If you believe you, you would have reacted and stayed in this natural human thing to react emotionally, you may have never come out of your house. And, and, and we, the world may not have ever been blessed by a resilient, courageous, professional author, business owner, and more a speaker, you name it, just a human being. Um, who chose to think through um, two a, a, a very, very um, catastrophic in my eyes events that shape the person you are today. 
looking back, if you had to give one piece of advice to anyone that is suffering in silence right now, suffering in silence right now, like you were for years, what would you give them? First and foremost, you're not alone. Millions upon millions of women globally um, have suffered the same indignity and, and, nev and never, uh, never talk about it. You're not alone. Secondly, uh, it's not about you. Really, it's a really hard concept to, to, to grasp. Sexual assault is not about you. It is the perpetrator. You are the object of the perpetrator's criminal behavior. Right. It does not define who you are as a human being. And if you allow it to define who you are as a human being, then that allows that perpetrator to control your life for the rest of your life. The response in my hero an analogy for me was that those two perpetrators now get no more than the 10 minutes of my life that they stole cumulatively, cumulatively between the two of them because they were real men. Um, they get no more than the 10 minutes of my life that they stole. So stop making it about them and, and, and go back to the inner strength that you have. Yeah. And sometimes just verbalizing it makes a difference. Hey Amen. No, you, you're an inspiration. I truly, I am truly thankful to have you on the show. How can people find you? Because I know there, I believe there are some listeners and viewers that want to connect. How can they find you? So you can find me on my website, laurenschiefer.com. I'm assume that, assuming that you can post that in show notes. I will. Yeah, there'll be um, in notes. With the spelling, because the spelling's a, a little unique. Um, uh, they can reach out to me, lauren at laurenschiefer.com. Uh, I'm on YouTube. I don't have the thousands of followers that many people do, but I am on YouTube. Um, and I'm on Instagram and all of those. I will tell you that this is not the subject that... Uh, uh, that I am known for. I am known for leadership development. Uh, so this was a choice that I made to break out of my armor for you and your listeners. And I'm happy to discuss it. I do have a keynote called out of the cesspool um, in my pocket for when um, people ask for it. But most of the time I'm known for leadership development. Well, Lauren, thank you so much. And I tell you what, leadership, you know, le you know the, 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 the behaviors. Um, and of course, the phone would go off right in the <laughs> middle of the podcast. That says, Lauren, you're done. Your time is up. And, and the interesting thing is, I know we're talking, the interesting thing is it's on vibrate and it's still ringing. So that is cool. That That is that, that is me, the good Lord going, what an amazing guest. And, you know, it's sending a message through our phone, which is on vibrate to go. We applaud you from the heavens. So that has never happened, Lauren. Never really? happened. And oh, I think okay. it's a, oh, yeah. So I think it's a spiritual, a spiritual way of saying thank you. So I thank you um, as 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 we move on. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, again, you guys heard how to connect with Lauren. Truly appreciate you. And thank you, and God bless you. And thank you for inspiring me, Lauren. You are welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no worries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, again, we had another amazing guest who was willing to remove their armor to help other people. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Be safe and God bless. Oh.